हैप्पी न्यू ईयर बाबा जी हैप्पी न्यू ईयर टू ऑल ऑफ यू मे यू ऑल बी ब्लेस्ड बाय स्वामी जी महाराज टू बी द मोस्ट फॉर्चुनेट फॉर स्पिरिचुअल वेल्थ पीस इन द वर्ल्ड प्रॉस्पेरिटी इन द वर्ल्ड एंड एवरी लकी चॉइसेस ब्लेसिंग्स फ्रॉम स्वामी जी एंड थैंक्स फॉर होल्डिंग दिस सेशन helping me to convey my messages experience what swami ji taught me in these answers thank you baba ji i will just share the screen baba ji today we will be talking on the topic of the true meaning of yoga um yoga means union with the origin baba ji has also clarified that we as human beings go through many life cycles effectively we reincarnate and live different lives in different forms which means we have no recollection of our past lives therefore when baba ji says yoga is essentially a union with the origin or self which origin or self is baba ji referring to when i refer to yourself or we not the physical body which is born and which will die as much beyond this it is the consciousness of existence just now it is in the form of mind though you have never recognized or thought or understood or try to see what the mind itself is generally everybody is aware of what is going on in the mind like in the form of thoughts and visions all these things are there then what is this mind itself in which thoughts and visions appear nothing appears to be there yet it is there in that only everything is happening so much is happening we call it mind but we don't know where it is what is its form like nobody has seen it in naked eyes but now if you try to understand mind is means it is a combination of consciousness and energy that is the next closest imagined terminology i can use to identify what that is this is also the source of consciousness of existence the i ness is coming to you always you feel that you exist i am existing i am here so that feeling that is coming is coming from there though you may not know the location at the moment simply in meditation you try to concentrate on that without knowing what you are going to do you are just asked to watch so now merging with the self means the ultimate truth of this mind this consciousness of existence this individual imagined selves several of these are the things i have used to term or to make you understand what it is closest the ultimate truth of this is the origin like you know now you a little bit clue you have got mind itself is like space it is there and it is not there it exists and it doesn't seems to be existing but yet it is there the one through one clue that we can understand that it is there the self is there is the consciousness of your own existence this will be more clearly visible or you are able to become aware or feel when you get rid of all thoughts and visions in your mind so that is the first step efforts through meditation we consistently repeatedly try to teach just to watch in between eyebrows and do not bother about anything that means i am trying to train you to teach you so that you do not hold on to the thoughts and visions that are there as a habit in your mind in you in your mind and in you are the same mind and you are not different 
there is no an external located object or thing other than you called mind it is the same because that is where the i existence consciousness also is coming so once you get trained you sincere that's why sincerely need to practice closing the eyes your effort should be with all the sincerity patience dedication just watch do not think what you are going to watch you just watch in between eyebrows you don't bother what is visible there what is not visible you don't have to bother then in due course of time all thoughts and visions will disappear they will dissolve just like the matter dissolve like we were discussing other day in other zoom classes also about the quantum physics type some of the basics which i understood in that is that matter is not solid quantum word has been used just like it keeps jumping in time and in shape it is not the same shape at all times today it is 70 years sometime later it will be 80 year old the physical body like that all matter have its own age limit if the human body has 70 to 100 years a mountain may have its own age limit and earth sun moon all have its own age limit that is how the matter means it keeps jumping one to another and then loses shape this is possible when you do not get involved with the matter that's what the quantum physics says you just watch that one and you can make it dissolve now you cannot make this universe dissolve with the power of your mind that's not possible you need to be a higher consciousness than this universe like all the matter that is in your mind so your mind is a higher consciousness actual mind is higher consciousness for all the matter that is in your mind in meditation in spirituality that's what we try to teach you first you are moment after moment you are involving with the thoughts and visions matter that is in your mind that is why it is not coming to an end it is not disappearing the source of all the matter is your mind imagination using the creative technology mind has imagine and the thoughts and visions are all there it's easy for us to understand that is in the mind in the name of imagination thoughts and visions but if i simply tell this world also the matter all the matter is like thoughts and visions appearance it will be difficult to understand because only when you experience a higher consciousness you can understand this so this will be possible when you strongly meditate deeper go to deeper meditation for a longer time that's what we call it as tapas more than 8 to 10 hours of continuous meditation when you would have gotten rid of all the thoughts and visions that are in the mind then you would merge with that higher consciousness then you continue the tapas then you will see that this matter called this universe which we are also a microspec part of this universe with holding this body a part of this matter that's why we cannot realize or understand this easily we will be able to get rid of, make this also dissolve then we will reach that higher consciousness which we refer to as becoming one with the origin yoga that is the yoga what we really mean when we talk about becoming a yogi or a yoga a yogi would have achieved this in deep meditations called when he would have achieved the samadhi practice samadhi is a total stillness of the present mind of yours once for all all visions all appearances all thoughts all stories 
would have come to an end that is in the mind that means in science words all matter that is in the mind would have come to an end would have dissolved and only pure consciousness at that time we won't call it mind when there is no appearance no matter is there we call it as pure consciousness in the same way what we mean as divinity which is a supreme pure consciousness is this space which is holding this universe world in its womb some words have been used in upanishads the divine is holding the world in its womb so these are some of the points to understand the origin of the yoga thank you baba ji um the next question through the practice of meditation the mind is able to merge with the self thus attaining self realization by turning the mind inwards making the mind concentrated so that it automatically goes introverted and becomes conscious of the real self baba ji i have been practicing meditation for more than 20 years now and i am still unsure of how i am able to make my mind introverted and become more conscious of my real self what should i do that is what the most important point 20 years or 40 years understanding the command of the master and that means when the master says keeping your back and neck straight and gently close your eyes follow the command it's easy for you to close the eyes not difficult then the next command concentrate your mind and sight in between eyebrows and just keep watching there this is the point where many many do not understand that we have to just watch if because here to understand the mind has two aspects one is it is able to watch that's what i call mind is a combination of consciousness and energy consciousness means wherever you apply your mind wherever you watch that will happen watching only through your mind eyes are a media to watch this world if you don't have the physical eyes you won't be able to watch this world that is a different thing but here just to watch is that is why you are asked to close the eyes you don't have to watch this world close the eyes try to watch in between eyebrows that means when you watch 100% you achieve you won't be able to think at all when you do not think automatically all the matter because of science i have started using the word matter so that everybody can understand matter means all the thoughts and visions that are the imagined created by the mind they will all dissolve the mind doesn't imagine no more when it doesn't imagines means it doesn't analyzes or makes any judgment this needs to happen for a progressive meditation the day anybody who can understand all i have to do is just to watch i keep repeating in my talks or answering a questions you are asked to watch but you are not asked to watch what so you don't have to bother what you are supposed to watch you just watch in between eyebrows whatever is there that is how swami ji used to he 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 used to be very blunt and rough when he used to answer hey what is your botheration i am asking you to just watch and you watch why are you asking what am i supposed to watch i didn't ask you what are you are supposed to ask and don't bother what is there you just watch then thoughts and visions come let them be there you don't bother about it if thoughts and visions are coming let them be there you don't bother so that means you understand and you stop bothering about thoughts and you just watch then you will see the wonder that all the thoughts and visions all the matter that are in the mind they will all dissolve disappear evaporate finish and then you are able to experience the consciousness of existence that is the purest sub consciousness 
you cannot make that disappear you become quiet no matter you achieve samadhi it is always there that is how you are able to determine that you as that consciousness of existence is eternal no power nothing has created that it was not created by your mind's imagination your own existence consciousness is not created by an imagination so it is there the same i can be experienced when you do tapas one day and when you experience in samadhi also your existence then also you will understand a higher consciousness did not create your real i and that means this consciousness is when it is one with that higher consciousness is also the same it is not just the i that you had imagined hitherto you are imagining about imagined individual self yourself with a name like for example your name is aruna and you are an woman and you are daughter of so and so and you belong to you are a sister of so and so so many one or two or hundreds of imaginations about yourself will be there all were sitting as a subtle body in your mind called consciousness so that is gone now so this is what you need to understand just you have to watch watch during watching time you need will power it it is could could be awful torturesome troublesome how to watch just thoughts are coming and you keep thinking thoughts are coming and you keep thinking you won't even understand the difference between the thoughts appearing in your mind and the thoughts you are creating freshly means you go on thinking about them a thin edge of difference is there those thoughts appearing visions are there because you had already thought about them that is that is what i call as acquired habits of the mind so that will all get stirred up when you close the eyes at that time just to have patience exercise patience that patience is what guru teaches when you serve the master that patience what my master taught me for 20 years in the physical body when he was with us and we were serving him whatever he subjected me into whatever way he behaved he got annoyed he scolded or he did anything he found faults or he criticized he never appreciated anything that he did he was actually training me to have this patience this patience when you become an expert in having this patience then meditation becomes so easy when you close the eyes you realize you have to just watch and then you will watch you will realize you don't have to bother about any thoughts or visions that is coming up that appearing because by then you would have become an expert in patience but the present day disciples don't have patience to get practiced into patience to authorize the master to help a student to practice patience their ego crops up they become so arrogant and they get annoyed sometimes disciples challenge us if you don't irritate me like this master then i will be able to respect you <laughs> imagine i heard one of my students telling me this <laughs> i had to become quiet okay baba you uh, you have to respect me then i will become quiet now let me have my patience so this is why they do not learn learning is so important when you go to school college academically if you have a reverence to the master who is teaching you then you will pay attention once you pay attention that means you have patience in learning that's when you are not giving rise to any other thoughts or visions in your mind you are just listening to the talk of the master when he is giving a lecture in the school college so then it penetrates your mind so this is what precisely we did that's how i learned 
in the 20 year i was simply observing why the master was doing like that why the master did it to me i had realized he is training me into something soon i will understand let me let me keep quiet at least at least let me have this thought he is my master after all he has the right to scold me he has the right to pull me up if he wants he has the right to cut me into pieces like that we used to think in the early days of when i came to swami ji my mind used to think like this then it became easy for me then i developed patience cultivated it occasionally i used to challenge in my mind with swami ji now that you are trying to irritate me getting annoyed with me i will love you more know that you cannot make me not to love you even if the master wants that means all other powers of the world is gone away you don't bother about any powers of the world nobody should be able to stop you from loving your master finally even if the master himself or herself wants to make you not to love him also he should not be able to do that one you must love that much you just love for sake of love so where is this in the present day students they accuse the master they judge the master the master is not self realized at all because the master didn't permit them to do whatever they wanted to do so this happens so how will they meditate how will they develop patience first first is the patient i have always spoken from day one about dedication discipline and patience these are the things dedication has to come from the student student has to dedicate himself or herself to the master when the master is doing the mission work then the master will teach both discipline and patience when the protocol is start when you get pulled up for any small mistakes sometimes it might appear oh this was a small trivial mistake but the master is shouting so well, roughly and toughly as if he is going to kill me i didn't do that much a big mistake why is this old man getting so much annoyed anybody would others would thought i have seen other people getting irritated by swami ji and leaving him and going away i saw in my life in that 20 years who were devotees for more than 30 years who were so close to him who were vips vips all these were there but one time he lost his temper or thus he acted upon he scolded they just left him they didn't want to step into the ashram again i said you what are these people they appear so much devoted to swami ji but this is all what their devotion is they never loved swami ji that means i saw it in my eye my god it can be so dreaded this is not easy to love the master if because anything you do but you will understand your capacity only when a test comes you are able to hold this zoom class suddenly some technical problem comes to you internet is not working and the sound is not coming properly muting unmuting so if you are an expert you will try to rectify quickly otherwise you will be bewildered i don't know what to do baba ji this is happening we are unable to do the zoom class today so like that anything when the test comes then your capacity is understood so particularly when you are with the master academically also tests come exam you have to face examinations and then you are nervous at that time oh somebody help me to pass this who will help you have to read prepare yourself remain dedicated be serious be disciplined have patience and be ready the master's grace will descend of course master will bless you he will be with you always so like that to imagine even today when i remember those days i feel so thrilled hair raising what else fortune that you need the most fortunate we were 
at least i was to be with the master for 20 years to be with a master like swami ji it was not easy to be close closer to him from a long distance is a different thing you come for a while half an hour have his darshan and then go away but if you had to stay with him day in and day out and day, um, day time and night time any time and once he had picked up the cane he wouldn't stop either you learn or you get out either you will become perfect or will you will break down you are finished you will come in some other swami ji sometime used to tell if you break down and go it may take many more lives and some other life when i come back again then you are lucky then you might feel attracted to me it all depends on you how much you loved i cannot tell that one like swami ji used to tell you have to love the master if you didn't love it somebody came and brainwashed you that oh your master this master is not self realized i have seen him closely he has this money he has this thing he is he travels in the car he hey he eats everything like i was only i have seen and you get brainwashed oh i see he is not self realized all these years what was i doing you also live and go away so what to say about these losers it may take 100 lives 1000 lives 55000 life cycles in some other life they will come if they get attracted to the master again if at all means that much of time it takes so all these things flow are coming i went on telling please you know everybody whatever i am talking is only for sake of education not to accuse any individual or group of individuals not to accuse any disciple any students what uh, my master taught me what i underwent with the master what i learned that was what i was trying to tell i thought this might be enlightening to all of you to be with the master is not an easy job that itself is a great tapas thank you baba ji baba ji what is the real self that baba ji talks about and how do we recognize our real self given that we are continuously reincarnating reincarnating up to 55000 life cycles so that is the important thing again because your attention you as the mind here or you as the consciousness you as that self is totally preoccupied with your own imagination that's why thoughts and visions are there if you observe 24 hours you get up you go into sleeping you dream and once you get up you start thinking imagining that means all your attention is preoccupied is totally busy with its own imaginations so it is unable to watch or become aware of itself so that itself is the truth you don't have to go out anywhere you don't have to see anything else that is why these things are called words are used peace within the divine is in you god is in you and you have the butter at home and you are going around looking for ghee ghee comes out of the butter you understand that is also an old saying <coughs> everything is at home and you are going around in the town looking for ghee that is how you are going around in this world as vasishta talks in this uh, ghor tap means harrowful of world that is the jungle forest this world is like a dreaded forest where you are likely to lose your way every moment you turn here you turn there you lose you get attracted to a mall you go inside the mall coming out of the mall may take hours you get trapped there so many attractive shops are there you get attracted you go on looking to everything you have a little bit money or oh, what should i buy what should i buy what should i buy you go around the mall whole day is wasted it's gone and you come out not buying anything so like that the maya illusion is so much dreaded forest in this world and within your mind so your mind is so preoccupied so busy 
it won't listen to anybody if i go on talk stand on the highway and try to talk this philosophy will anybody listen everybody is so busy in the world they are looking for the same happiness but they won't listen to me they will expect the happiness to come from somewhere they are looking in the forest where is the way to go out where is the way to go out so that is why they are unable to know their own real self but that is there as i have been talking consciousness of existence is there amongst millions of thoughts this is another thing i try to talk in my teachings and answer also amongst millions of thoughts that is in your mind all the thoughts which are imaginations but there is one thing which is not an imagination that is the consciousness of your own existence you always have this feeling that you exist this is in the form of awareness actually because you don't have to think with a thought who oh, i am existing i am existing i am existing i am existing you don't think like that but you are able to feel that you exist but that existence attention is on to thoughts and visions that's why you are unable to know yourself so this has broken into a small droplet from the origin the ultimate truth because of its reincarnating reincarnating if you remember i have told in my talks every time the consciousness reincarnates it gets split it becomes diluted means its power decreases like for destiny also i have told when your consciousness was with its 100000 potency whatever it would have thought visualized resolved has become destiny for you now who has 10% potency of that consciousness so you are unable to change your destiny easily with the help of your mind to change your destiny you have to reach the higher consciousness of yourself that's how you have to meditate meditate just watch meditating means you simply have to practice remaining quiet enough of thinking analyzing see this world is different always this doubt the first comes to everybody then what will i do in the world if i don't think man you can always think in this world you won't lose the thinking power as long as you are in this body don't worry about that just now after you become a master of your mind that you are able to keep quiet as long as you are able to keep you want to keep quiet at that time if you want to think you can always think and you don't want to think you can stop thinking so this remain assured so now when you make all matter that is in the mind dissolve then automatically the mind goes introverted means it starts merging into itself going in itself just now it is known as in the extroverted with its own imagination it is conscious of this world and it tries to imagine about so many other worlds or anything it can be imagining it is all extroverted totally that's why anybody when we ask you to sit down closing the eyes and meditate it is such a torture some some people might even think how scolding me this old man is such an idiot every time he tortures me instead of asking me giving me that self realization he wants me to close the eyes and keep watching hundreds of thoughts coming how to get rid of that that also this old man doesn't tell me properly you have never listened to me i have been telling i have been telling every time i answer a question every time i try to teach i keep telling 20 years 23 years now i keep telling but until you don't understand so then your mind will be extrovert and busy that's when you are unable to feel that consciousness of existence also you don't have time to see that one ki that is there what is that that is the greatest wonder if anything wondrous things is happening we become so curious and rush to see that one 
but we don't bother that greatest wonder that is within us that is we ourselves how we are existing it doesn't appears to be there at all so like that we have to visualize understand then practice watching then only it will be possible that you become aware of yourself as you in this process i have spoken with few words but this is a long process that you meditate then you do tapas you become an expert you go on doing that one so people are not ready to take the first step of practicing patience with the master so how to teach them difficult you see <coughs> so that is what one has to practice patience then practice meditation then you are able to do tapas but don't have to lose heart never lose hope or heart i was also like you all only i could do it you can also do it you can do it simply you need to understand that you need to do that then that's no difficult you are hungry you will learn to make some chapatis if nobody else is there if no chapati is coming to you from anywhere else but some wheat flour is kept in front of you and some water is given to you and some flame is also there and you are locked in a room and you are hungry you will learn to mix the wheat flour with the water and you will learn to make chapatis if you are forced to do that one that's what the training master gives until if the master pampers you by talking very sweetly all the time and sweet not uh, bothering about what you are learning what you are not learning then what will you learn if the master doesn't pamper you he takes up his cane know that you are the most fortunate one that was how we consider ourselves were the most fortunate to be with that great master who came as shiva bala yogi he loved me so much that's why he took cane into hands he wanted to make me perfect he knew one day i have to do tapas he took up his cane how gracious he was how kind he was how compassionate he was really who can understand this compassion of the master this grace of a mother a mother wants the child to be perfectly on the track so this is all needed then only you will know about that self that you need to realize step by step if you undergo the training then it will not be difficult thank you baba ji the next question it is interesting what baba ji says that once your imagination separates from the self ego and illusion sets in and the self is forgotten and that every time reincarnation happens the mind acquires new imprints the mind begins to analyze the new imprints and makes judgments these imprints then become acquired habits of the mind can baba ji explain what you mean by the self forgets itself of what it is over time and the many reincarnation it undergoes see a while ago for the last question also i was explaining the same how you have become preoccupied with your own imaginations something like that you go out of your home no problem you go in the town the whole day when you go in the town you should have had some aim why you are going out of home into the town you couldn't have afforded to roam around the town aimlessly if anybody ask what are you doing in the town nothing just like that i came out of the home i am going around the town that's all you should have some aim why you came out of the home from the secure comforts of the home why did you come out you came to go to a school to learn something you have to search for that one then you will find then you have to give your time and energy then you will learn otherwise if you just came out to do the time pass you wouldn't learn anything at all so th- that is how 
when you learn want to learn the meditation you are coming out of your comforts you are secure you want to learn you want to know about yourself what you really are otherwise you need to be aware sooner or later the body through which you are living in this world you are going around the world you have a personality you have a name that body will die inevitably that's when prince siddhartha became a buddha when he started thinking like this and when he became restless he became buddha today the world adores him gets inspired for non violence for peace about buddha so swami ji used to tell bhai swami ji is like a buddha whatever i teach you need to understand thoroughly because when your students next generation listen to you you should be able to convey in the right sense of what i wanted to convey to you through you that he used to tell so that's why when we got the chance to have the first hand teachings from our master physically then we could understand what he really wanted to teach not every devotee of swami ji would have understood what he really wanted to teach because today many people have different ideas swami ji just wanted me not to meditate one lady used to come to dehradun ashram i remember swami ji told you do not meditate otherwise you will get into samadhi does this makes any sense she didn't want to meditate will swami ji tell that you don't have to meditate you will get into samadhi why will he do that his very mission was you meditate and know yourself but every student will listen only that is convenient to them and try to understand whatever is convenient to them that much they will do it this is what swami ji wanted me to do go into a trance and do the dancing 40 years later they don't know what else further they don't know how to meditate they have not realized the self they simply can get up and dance and shout and threaten others these two things like this many people understood swami ji according to their capacity whatever they could understand that's all they understood so this is also very important <coughs> dedicating with apt attention that's what i was trying to tell in the previous question also understanding what the master wanted to teach otherwise if you don't realize this body will go you know 50 years ago when i came this body was 20 years i came to swami ji i was 20 year old but today it is 70 years but we are grateful to the master our 20 years with him and the next 30 years have not gone waste 70 years of this body is not wasted we are grateful to the compassion and grace and blessings of the master we learnt something the world may not have been able to understand the world might not have seen me in those days also even today those people who saw me washing the utensils they don't want to consider me that i can teach something they just want to treat me like only that utensil washing person how dare he has become a yogi they don't take it kindly but in front of others they just uh, try to do pranams it's up to them if they are they are not destined to learn anything those are the people who did not learn from such a great master what will they learn from me in this forum i am only a disciple of shiva bala yogi this is a different thing means if people don't learn this is what one needs to learn that is the reason a reverence to the master is important it is a stone you just pour the water but the imagination that you would have about that stone is the thing which will make difference for you you should imagine you are pouring water on lord shiva on a shiva lingam if you imagine oh, after all this is a stone and keep pouring water and everybody is watching it's useless for you you are doing a waste of exercise you won't gain anything you won't learn anything because you are considering that as only a stone 
That's what you have learned from childhood. Everybody told that this is after all a stone. One politician said that all those people who worship this stone are like animals, idiots. <laughs> they used to say like this, and he became popular for people. Out of curiosity, they used to go to him. He is telling by he is a atheist. He says that there is no God. It is not God. Why are you wasting your time pouring your water on the stone? I used to say that I love this stone. This is my God. For me, this is God. This is my Swami Ji. Not simply a stone idol of a little Satya Raju is here. This is my loving Swami Ji is sitting here. I pour water on him. It's up to me. It's my wishes. Who are you to object? You don't like to pour. You don't pour. You go away. You don't like to do pranams. You go away. So this is very important. How much you have reverence or attachment or love to your master, then you will learn. No power can brainwash you. Then no power can stop you from learning. If you don't want to learn, no power can make you learn. Also, even the greatest yogi is coming to this world. Cannot teach everybody because they didn't want to learn. Not that the master didn't have capacity. Master had the capacity, but simply people came in hundreds and millions. Some came to gossip. We saw people used to be standing around his dais when Swami Ji used to come and sit down. As much time they got, they used to keep gossiping. Some used to gossip, and some used to curiously listening to those gossips. So they never learnt anything. They never tried to meditate, and time wasted, gone. So this learning, you will learn only when you consider the master as a master. You have to consider. You can think it's only uh, simply a Baba Ji is sitting, an old man, and he has lots of money, and he has nothing to teach. So we don't have to stay with him. We need to uh, discard him. He is jeopardizing his own mission. He cannot teach anything. Fifteen years you stay, you serve, and you did not learn. What can I do? It's not my fault if that person did not learn anything. Just called me. I am only a stone, useless stone. Why was the need to pour water on me? The stone did not do anything. It didn't ask you to pour water or do worship. It is simply there. It is your imagination which can elevate you to that divinity one day. So that is the essence of bhakti and spirituality. So that reverence you need to have to the master to learn. Every moment we used to be, even today, my guru's words keep ringing in the ah ears. I cannot waste my time even for a single day. I cannot just keep sitting there. I'll be doing something. The eyes were troubling, but I cannot sit and relax like that one. I'll be doing something. I'll be trying to send some words to someone and trying to see some email, and I try to meditate and try to learn something to teach others like that. It keeps going on. So that reverence you need to have to the master. Once you have, you will be serious to learn. The master asked you to meditate. You should meditate every day. You meditate once in a while. We come on the Zoom. In these Thursday Zooms, we come once in a fortnight, right? Fifteen days. Sometimes in the middle, some other business, busy things happen, and we are unable to hold this uh, Zoom classes. But what were you doing, idiot? Uh, not uh, directed to any particular person. Jokingly, I said that's how Swami Ji used to address me. What were you doing all these fifteen days? All this one month that we didn't come on the Zoom. Were you meditating? Were you just watching in between eyebrows? So this seriousness is necessary from the master. Then you will know yourself. It's not very difficult. Simply you have to stop all other thoughts and vision. Then you will know. Because it is there. You are there. You are the one. Where can you? Go away from yourself. If it was something else, it could have gone away. 
this body will go away from you one day it will die but you cannot go away from yourself you are the only one who will accompany you when you d- the body dies even if you take up a next birth also it is you who is going to take anybody who was your parents who was your husband who was your wife who was you who were your children nobody may be there again who were there in your 50 lives are they here again if all the 50 lives people would have been born to you or become your husbands or become your wives become your parents was it possible no possibility so when this body is available ashtavakra talks when this body is available do not waste a moment learn the things from your master adopting such methods you learn even krishna talks before death shall claim the all these great masters always talked about death as an inevitable thing this quantum physics the matter is going to jump this body called matter is going to jump from its childhood to the early teens it will jump to the teens then it will jump to the youth it will jump into the middle age then it will jump into the old age then it will jump into a dead body so that's how things will happen masters used to scold in those days what are you wasting your time this thing swami ji spoke to me often he spoke to me about death also if you keep wasting your time body will die today i am in front of you as a 50 year old and you are just 20 year old one day will come you will be 70 year old and your students will be 20 year old he used to tell me this then you will see your body has become so don't waste time he used to say okay nobody should waste you have a challenge you have to earn your livelihood you need some financial backing you need a home you need a support a secure system but in the midst of that without wasting practice meditation every day then when you get rid of all other thoughts then you are visible the secret of yourself is revealed 